Guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another episode of the Gorecast. Uh, we've, we haven't been recording them for the last few weeks. I've been traveling and shit, so thank you for uh, being patient. But we are back, and uh, also I'm going to be in Fort Worth, Texas on August 31st. Uh, opening up the show and hosting for my boy Michael Ridley. So grab tickets. They're uh, in the link in the description. Um, and make sure to like and subscribe. Uh, today we have a third-time guest, one of my favorite people in all of Austin, Texas, the man that is responsible for getting me to start doing stand-up comedy in the first place. He, I like to describe him as the great Deku tree of Austin comedy. You guys give it up for Yonder Wizard. Yeah, the great Deku tree is back, folks. Yes, we're going to church, bro. Brother. That's what I call doing a podcast with you is we're going to church. Praise I, God. I, I need to check in, dude. I need to check in with myself. I need yep. to go to church. Hail Satan. Hail Satan. How you doing, buddy? Great. How are you, buddy? I'm good, man. I'm just living living the dream. Life is crazy right now. Oh, don't Life I know is just it. So we're so fortunate. I have to remind myself every day because you get caught up in kind of the hustle and bustle and the grind. But like, dude, oh, yeah. we are having so much fun out here. Life is even on the hardest, hottest slowest days life is fucking good man yeah life is pretty good um i have a hard time believing that it's real most days yeah like uh i don't know it's it's as, especially now after kill tony is the biggest thing on the fucking planet and it's right in our own backyard and we i don't know man it's, it's it's cool that people outside of here are getting into that stuff now. Like, people yeah. from back home who never gave a shit about it when I was losing my mind over it, like, six years ago. Mm -hmm. And for people that don't know, you, are you you like, run the Discord. People that haven't tuned into the podcast before, we can give them a little oh, re yeah. refresher course about, like, how By you're By the involved. way, you got to watch all the episodes. You got to watch them. You got to go back to that first one where you're completely out of focus the entire time and I didn't know what I was doing and we were doing it in my shitty apartment complex thing. And and then uh, I think it was your camera like died halfway through. So halfway through, it's just me talking. It's just me and you you talking from the from the other, you know, from the background. And but the, you got to you got to just bob and you got to learn. Right. The meat was good. It was the meat on that one was good. That was it was perfect. But yeah, man, like, yeah, I I. I I don't really actively run them anymore, the Discord or the subreddit, but mm. I'm still like I'm still in there. Yeah. And I still have the powers I always had. <laughs> the wizard powers you've always had. Yeah. I'm fucking out of it, by the way. I am too, man. We're just chilling. I mean, we're, we're, it's all right. We have we we just both of us just pretty much woke up. We're still we're yeah. still activating. The gears are slowly turning, dude. We're greasing our gears right now. Yeah, dude. I was like, I, I set I set my alarm to get up, and then I I got up, and then uh, I think I turned it off, like it, subconsciously, and then I, I I somehow woke up and saw the message, and I was like, oh shit, yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> Let's get going. <laughs> it's so funny too because it's like it's that's just how everyone is when you like schedule because everyone like is doing a podcast out here and everybody wants each other on and like we schedule hey yeah. dude, let's do and you and I have been looking forward to this for like three weeks now and every time I see you down there every night or every other night you're like you know Tuesday at two Tuesday at two Tuesday at two you were the last one to say it you you said it to me last time I saw you Tuesday at two and I went you bet and, yeah <laughs> and then the day comes and you're like <laughs> Well, okay, hey, what am I doing? Okay, good thing I don't have anything going on today. And then, yeah. and then you look at your phone. And, oh, shit. I oh, did make yeah. some fucking plans. No, it wasn't. I knew it was happening. I just, like, I, I we did virtual red band last night. Mm -hmm. And uh, can you explain what that is a little bit? Okay, so virtual red band is, in short, the reason I live in Austin. But uh, it's um, red band, Brian red band from Kill Tony, obviously. Uh, does this thing? We all go into this thing game called VR Chat, mm -hmm. and you can do it on PC, but we usually do it in VR headsets, and you're basically like a little cartoon version of whatever your avatar is, and you can just hang out, and we just go from world to world, and that's all it is. It's literally like you're like we we could be in a podcast studio, but you could be like. I don't know, like a like a kangaroo, like Chuck E. And, Cheese and with huge tits. Exactly, Red Man is Wendy's Wendy from Wendy's <laughs> with giant knockers. <laughs> I think I've seen that before. Hell of a front porch on that boy. Yeah, 
<laughs> yeah. Hell of Hell a front, of a front porch. porch. Um <laughs> But no, it's 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 that, and I'm Merlin from Sword in the Stone. So like mm, I got I'm, I'm fitting giant blue robe and, and yeah. wizard hat with the wand and everything. Like it's that's who I've always was <laughs> to Red Band casting spells on people, giving them huge tits. I wish I could do that. That'd I wish good, I could do that. That'd be awesome. <laughs> Abraca, Abraca Tita. Uh, yeah. Abraca bosom. Abraca yeah, bosom. Whatever. I was trying to think of something clever to say. Yeah. It, it took me Abraca a second. Abraca double Ds. There you there go. There you go. But no, nah, that, that's what it is. And uh, uh, so basically there's like a group of us. There's about 15 t- to 20 of us that rotates out. And there's probably, you know, 10 of us at a time that kind of. What do you do when you go in there? So you just Whatever go you and want. hang. And you would literally just talk, talk to each other and jump around and hang out. Yeah, we smoke. We smoke a lot. Uh, we we do it on we do it on YouTube. Honestly, you could probably like uh, it, 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 on Red Band's YouTube. Oh, uh, actually, I got to do something really quick. Sorry, Yonder. Uh, no, you're it's good. An emergency here. Uh, we'll be right back. And we're back. I'm sorry about that, dude. No, you're good. I might get I might get pulled away one more time, but we're gonna we're gonna just we're gonna get through this. Uh, so yeah, so virtual Red Band here. Yeah, just, and, then and on you his can keep live. the volume down to on the slide the Bluetooth slider. Just show us what it looks like here. The little the button under. The third where it says home video shorts live, go click live up top. There you go. That's where we do all of our shit. That's okay. uh the part twos are where we're in are where we're in VR chat. So you can just click any part two. And this is what Red Band does when he's not doing the kill Tony stuff. Yeah. Just clip to the middle. <laughs> <laughs> I love the Wendy's. Yeah. Whoa! So this is this is it. That, <laughs> that's that's <laughs> Red Man, that's Stud that's Muffin, this, and that's me over there to the Scroll, side down with the little. long, with the beard. <laughs> you can see my beard over to the left, yeah, like and that's that. Janice. That's Toe. That's Red dog. Man's fiance is the hot dog. Fuck yeah! The guy talking you know, is Stud like Muffin, that. the By pimp. Way, but see, this is like just a world we're living in. To. Or, or, or yes. hanging out in. But you guys are just kind of chatting and, yeah, and bullshitting. Here, turn the volume off to you. That's all um, it is, yeah. Nice. Sounds like Brian Redband sneaking back in. <laughs> 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 all right, you cut it off. Dude. But yeah, that, that's, that's cool. basically what it is right there. Where, that's the thing. <laughs> that's the thing. Yeah. Uh, uh, so what? So. So it's just kind of so it's kind of like a podcast, but kind of it's just a hang. It's a, it's a, hang. a hang with crazy, silly characters and. So part one of VR chat is Red Band just talking. Mm-hmm. He's just talking with us, uh, and like not with us, but like he's just it's it's him in real life in front of his microphone talking about okay, so this episode of Kill Tony that dropped this week was pretty cool, or yes, yeah, Secret Show last night was cool, or whatever the thing is, mm-hmm. and uh, he does that for about an hour. Sometimes an hour and a half, and then after that, he's like, "All right, guys, we're gonna split this up. I'm gonna go get some ice, fix a drink. You go do your thing. Go get a snack, walk your dog. We're gonna come back, and that part two will be in VR. Mm. So then, it switches to part two, which is that. Okay, I just showed you. Nice. But and- yeah, we're just smoking. Like yeah. we're in our own rooms. We're in our own houses. Where everybody is comfortable in their own space and. I'm a weirdo, so that makes me happy. Right. You know, to know that everybody's happy in their own space, and that's a thing that I'm happy about. That's kind of something I was thinking about, because I used to do Twitch streaming, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. And I feel like the type of people that really enjoy, like, interacting in the chat, I I, I always wonder if those people are, like, maybe they don't enjoy traditional social settings as much because they maybe have anxiety or whatever. Yeah. And then when they're they're there, they can kind of, be part of the hang and then chime in when they want to on right. chat, and then they kind of have a little more control over their little social interaction. Kind of, right. it's and that that was always cool. You know what I mean? Just seeing people that might they might not that there's people probably on there that are super super social in the chat talking or whatever, but they're, oh, yeah. they're they would be the guy on the wall at the party or something. Oh well, you I'm know? I'm honestly I'm kind of that guy. Okay, I'm an introvert that's very good at pretending to be an extrovert. Uh, a lot of the time. Mm. Uh oh, I just lost something here. Did you lose your headphones? It just, unless I'm dying, 
Am I dying? Is it the knobby on the side? Did you bump nah, the knobby? No. Nah. I no? don't know. You can't. Can you hear? Yeah. Okay. I, I can oh, you're hear good now. now. It went down. Like it, it went down, and then it came back. Weird. It I got maybe scared. a noise gate thing. I'm sorry. You're, no, don't. You're worry. not having a stroke. You're not having it's a stroke. It's okay. Sometimes I get scared. <laughs> God, this studio sucks. Especially everything here sucks. Especially when I'm. Uh, especially when I'm talking about. Um, uh, being an introvert. Being an introvert. <laughs> and then I'm just like, oh, God, they're coming for me. They, they know. They're taking your voice. They're fucking, they can hear me. <laughs> um, but no, they, uh, yeah, they, uh, oh, shit. Well, oh, yeah, I'm an introvert that's very good at pretending to be an extrovert most time. Or, mm -hmm. yeah. So I'm the guy who likes to be able to chime in when I want. Like, even in, in, in VR chat, until Red Band's like, Yonder, what do you think about yada, yada, yada? I'm pretty much just kind of hanging to the side. You can hit the mute if you want. Yeah, if I Fix want. Fix yourself a hot dog. Most of the time, I'm just sitting there with my VR headset mm -hmm. up on my head, and I'm just kind of fucking with my phone, and then all of a sudden, there'll be like a list of things going around. We're going to go around the room, and everybody say their favorite uh, cereal <laughs> or whatever, and and then they go around the room, and it's like, Everybody in our little group says their own says their little thing or whatever, mm -hmm. and then whenever it gets to me, sometimes I uh, admittedly haven't been paying attention and don't know the question. So whenever they ask me something, I just say, I just talk, mm -hmm. and it doesn't even have to be relevant. <laughs> and usually, it goes better than the people that give an honest answer, like a <laughs> an earnest answer, yeah. when I'm just. I'm just, just saying something stupid. <laughs> They're like, "What's your favorite cereal?" Everyone goes around and it gets to you, and then you're like, "Oh, you're." It's like the kid that wasn't paying attention in class, yeah. you know. And they're like, "Yonder, please read from a uh, paragraph," you know. Yeah. And then, uh, and then you're like, "Oh, uh, back in uh, 1998, I was in uh, in South Carolina." <laughs> you know, yeah. You uh, like going on. This reminds me of this time we went to Revco to pick <laughs> up some. Uh, uh, my cousin got lice. <laughs> And, uh, and then they're like, what the? And I, yeah, I, <laughs> we were talking about Fruity Pebbles yonder. Oh, yeah. Fruity Pebbles are good. <laughs> See, like that. Yeah, like it yeah. would be it would be something stupid like that. Uh, but, yeah, that's I did that in South Carolina before I moved here. So, like, that's how I really became friends with Brian. Mm. And. After that happened, and I, I would play music in there sometimes because there's actual open mics in virtual reality that we oh, go really? to sometimes, and we got a crew. So sometimes we'll go into a room and kind of like take over an open mic, mm -hmm. and we'll do like a secret show in VR because there's like, I'll come on and play like three or four songs, and then nice. I'll introduce Red Band, and Red Band lets everybody in our group like – this first person coming to the stage is yada yada yada. He hosts a little comedy show for everybody a in our group. Virtual comedy show, and like nobody's a comic. <laughs> like they're just yeah. normal people, but they go up playing, and try to. But they go up and shit. do it. It's funny. It's yeah. it's, it's kind of fun. The heartburns. I'm losing a battle today. What folks. did you What did you eat? What's What is it from? It, it was something dirty late night. Yeah. Be honest. Tell us about it. Let's. We're going to church yonder. We're going to church. It was Burger King. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, it was, it was oh Burger no! King What'd you do? <laughs> what did you do at the BK, at the at the the BK, the BK lounge? lounge? <laughs> it was the onion ring. Oh no! Did you have the little zesty sauce too that it comes with? No. Oh, you just went. You raw dogged them. <laughs> <laughs> you were raw dogging BK onion rings at two a.m. <laughs> no, I just ate it like this out of the thing. <laughs> <laughs> so all those little it. acidic crumbs at the bottom, every last crumb. Yeah, mm, it's okay. I'm Doesn't it feel good to get it out there? Doesn't it feel good to kind of just get it off your chest and? No, <laughs> <laughs> no, no. But it was. I, I tell you what, it was. It wasn't the burger. It, it, it was the Dr Pepper. Oh yeah, that'll get you, dude. It was the Dr Pepper that got me because I've been I've been doing this thing lately where I I I don't. I didn't drink soft drinks for years until I moved to Austin and I started wanting to drink like hard beverages. Mm. And then I was like, man, well, I can't do that. We're not so going I back gotta, to being we're people, not for doing people that. that don't know you're sober for how long now? Uh, 
March of 2016. Damn. Eight, eight and a half. Sober, no alcohol. Alcohol sober. Yeah, no, no booze. Nice. Uh, no booze for like eight, eight years and some change, and then no powder for like seven years and some change. Dude, you on the powder would have been crazy. Bro. I can't imagine you on the pow pow hitting Bro. the slopes Bro. with Yon Deezy. Bro. <laughs> What did that? What was that like? Give me a rundown of that. It was uh, either the best time you've ever had, or the best time I've ever had. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, it was. Uh, What's like a good time and a bad time for somebody hanging out with you on coke? Okay, a good time with me is maybe a store, a quick, a quick. If you got a quick story of each. Oh man, we used to play rummy. One of my buddies who I used to mess around with that stuff with was actually in town this weekend, and we were talking about it because he also we both of us kind of stopped at the same time, and we were both saying like, "Man, honestly, I kind of think maybe the last time we did this was together." Like, and mm. neither of us knew it was going to be the last time. Right. You just had We just cuz I don't even know the exact day. I know that I know my sober date from booze. I know my no cigarettes date. I know the date on all of those. But I don't I don't know the date on the powder. But bro, we used to play rummy and uh I had this rocking chair that was haunted. <laughs> <laughs> haunted rocking chair? Yeah. And it was funny. It was because, and I, we found out it was haunted because we used to play a lot of rummy at the house. We, we, we were just cards, Uno. You cards guys would against just humanity. do blow and play cards. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why that's so funny to me. What? what? <laughs> like it's just you go do blow and you go to a sh rock show. You go to do something crazy, but you just do. Oh no, nah, dude. And we were like, dude, fucking hit me. <laughs> no, nah, we were like uh, crazy people that we would take turns looking out the window. Um, but no, we'd pass around a plate, just like we'd have like just a regular white. Sir, I still have the plate, <laughs> the commemorative plate. I still have it. I just eat steak off of it now. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, we would just pass around the plate and play rummy. But I, we found out the chair was haunted because no matter who it was that sat in that chair, always ended up getting like angry, <laughs> getting really disgruntled about the game. Or something like that, and then we started just kind of making a joke. All oh, the chair is, all oh, the chair is haunted, yeah. and only a couple people knew it. So we would, uh, we would put whoever was new, like, "Hey, you get the rocking chair," and then, "Oh, I love I, this is comfortable. I love this." And then you'd be like, "We'll wait and see." And then, but I would, we wouldn't tell anybody. We yeah. wouldn't tell them. But then after a while, they would kind of start getting angry, getting and they nasty. would start getting getting nasty and snippy. And it just, it was always whoever sat in that chair. And then we'd be like, we'd be like, hey, how about come sit over here for a little bit? And then they would like get up cool and go off. somewhere else. Blow off and some then steam over be, in, the, in the armchair. Like they would, it would almost be like they would stand up and the spell would be broken. <laughs> and you could, I'm not even joking, you could see it. But one time, my, uh, my buddy who was here this past weekend, his, his now wife was hanging out with us. And, I looked at the guy sitting in the chair and I I we came to the conclusion that the per the whatever ghost lived in the chair was an, an angry old woman. <laughs> because it was like snippy old old lady stuff that they would like bark at you. Yeah. <laughs> it was always that. And 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 like, well, and, you anyway. just you, you skipped your turn. Something like that. Like And I knew the name. I knew a name that I had that I had like just had just keep reoccurring in my mind or whatever. And I was like, I looked at him and I was like, hey, do me a favor. If you could choose any old lady, angry old lady name, what would it be? And I cupped my so he could not, he's sitting over here and Hannah is sitting over here. Yeah, you got okay. it. Okay, we'll be, I'm sorry, thing. one more time, guys. We'll be right back. I'm really sorry about this. No, no, no. And we're back. God, all right. I'm so sorry, dude. Nonsense. We, we, we're, we're dealing. Uh, yeah, we're dealing with homeless people outside of the studio and trying to ask them nicely to leave. They don't. They don't ask nice. We, you know, all too well. You work on Sixth Street. Oh, I do fucking know. Um, anyway, you were talking about yes. you were talking about the evil chair, the haunted and you, chair, and you were you were getting ready to tell us that you yes. picked an old lady name. I asked Tyler, who's sitting in the chair, if you could pick. 
if you could pick any old lady's name, like an angry old lady's name, what would it be? I cupped my mouth so that he couldn't see what I was saying, and I mouthed the word Ethel to Hannah. <laughs> I mouthed the word Ethel to Hannah, and as I was saying, it came out of Tyler's mouth. Whoa. And I'm not even joking you. Like, it, it fucking... Everybody in the room got real, real Chills. fucking, Chills. like, wide-eyed. It got weird. And, dude, we were all, like, out of our minds at this <laughs> yeah, point, this like, on powder. It was a cocaine derangement. It really, it really, <laughs> that's, what it, that's what it was. But I don't know if any of that shit's real, but that happened. <laughs> and there was a weird, at the very least, a weird dr drug-induced wavelength that you guys were on, a, bra a brain wavelength dude, that you we, guys are on. We talked about that the other night at a Texas Roadhouse with my boys. It's the best place to talk about something like that. By the way, Texas Roadhouse rules. It, it fucking, fucking slaps. slaps. Yeah, it's so good. They get they they always get their meats from small independent farms that aren't owned by like huge uh, imported companies mm -hmm. that come in and buy up all the land in Texas. And them little rolls with the cinnamon butter. Jesus Christ! Oh man, they just keep them coming too. They'll they'll have sweat beads running down their head, running you fresh rolls. That's how hard they're working on in there. Them boys were like, um, "Oh man, I shouldn't eat so many rolls. I can't eat all my steak." And I'm like, "Shit." Glad I'm not afflicted with these issues. <laughs> you better man up, son. I'm You're in a Texas Roadhouse. I'm glad I don't have these problems. You're telling me you didn't clear out before this? <laughs> yeah, dude. But not. Nah, but like that was so that that's was a fun one time. crazy. That was a that was a fun time. There's been some bad times where I had a roommate at the time who we did a lot together, and it got to the point to where if I was doing it and he wasn't there for it. He would always come home pissed off, mm. like, "Whoa, you didn't and nothing like, for nothing for me." That's like when you eat dinner without your girlfriend. <laughs> nothing for me. You know what I mean? Oh, you already ate dinner. Oh. oh, oh. So wait, we were on season two last night, but you're on season four now. Mm. Um, oh, why? <laughs> Yeah, what we the hell? To watch that together. Your cocaine buddy is actually like your your <laughs> your girlfriend. I mean, you said that you got three bags, and now I only see a one. Yeah, so what were you doing yesterday? I see the plate is on the table. Why is the plate on the table? It stays in the drawer. Look at me when I'm talking to you yonder. Yeah. <laughs> no, but seriously, like that. No, but seriously, but uh, that was a thing. And that's honestly the main reason why I stopped was because I was like, dude, this isn't fun anymore. But at the end, I started getting uh, really a really good deal on some really good shit that turned out to be meth. Oh, that's why it was so good. They're towards the end. <laughs> They're towards the end. We were doing meth playing rummy, just cards. <laughs> Just like, <laughs> what is the rummy again? What are what are you saying while you're playing it? Like, it's not like fucking so hit rummy, me, right? No, nah, rummy is like you have to do everything in sets of threes. But you have like someone has like okay, um, you get all the you get like what seven cards in your hand, and then you're like, okay, I'm gonna lay down a three, four, five, not suited, and then they're like. Ah, okay, all right. So three, four, five, not suited. That means that shit. I had three, three, three over here, so I can't get four threes. I can lay down my three threes here, and that's points. You get points per card. I know okay. this is a I'm crazy so lost. thing. Yeah, I'm not good with numbers and stuff. Well, no, nah, this is just 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 cards, right? So like, uh, uh, basically, if you have like. You can do like three of a kind, four of a kind, but you can also do suits, but everything comes in threes. So you could do seven, eight, nine, or if you have three sevens in your hand, you could do three sevens. But if someone has three sevens and you have one seven, you could say, I'm going to play this seven with those three sevens. Mm. So these are my points. Those are your points, but I'm playing this off of that. You're getting points off the matching, the so matching that, numbers. Right. Okay. So that closes out. With it's kind of like no, okay. I was gonna say it's kind of like Uno, but no, it's not. <laughs> no. It's it's sort of similar, but like it's a point system. So you like okay, uh, it's it's card games are. How would you play that on meth? 
Well, if you know the if you if you know how to play it, it's it's. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's a fun time, and we would always imagine, play to like a thousand. We would play to like a thousand points. So yeah, that, that's that's like sometimes three, four hours. But um, but yeah, that was that was the thing, and and, and I would obviously uh, I mean, I kept a bag in my pocket pretty much all the time, <laughs> so like I was doing key bumps in the bathroom, and I'd go back on stage, and uh, like this was all during gigs too. Mm-hmm. Like, it was it was just that was my life. So, so you then. went from the powder to the pepper. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you went from the powder to the pepper, dude. Yeah, from yeah. Which, I literally. Which 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 one do you think is really that much better for you? You know, like the powder. At least you're not getting the calories, right? At least you're not getting the sugar intake. What's worse, the sugar, the sugar, or the or the cocaine? I mean, honestly. <sighs> It's apples and oranges. It really is, because I mean, I, I think that anything like that, or anything, can become that if you're an addict. And I'm an addict, mm. like no doubt. Um. So anything that I do, I'm addicted to it. Like anything that I do that I like, it's almost like a a, a Tourette tick, something Music. that I can't help. Like I'm an addict. I I, I want this thing. Mm-hmm. Like right now, I'm addicted to the YouTube stuff, like where mm-hmm. I'm streaming and that's that's which, my... by the way, you're killing it on YouTube. We follow yonder, Thank you guys you. on YouTube. He just recently crushed a thousand, right? A yeah. thousand subs. Yeah, a thousand you're monetized. Subs. We're monetized fully yeah. now. What are you doing on there? Uh, right now, I'm streaming Red Dead too. Okay. Um, nice. but I've, I bet I've... that's fun to watch you stream that. I bet you do do some voices and stuff. Yeah, I do the I do a uh, a good bit of voices on there, but it's fun because I get to take out all the anger I have towards the homeless <laughs> yes, on the people in that game. Yeah. I, I I did want to circle back on this, and that's all, that's something I've been talking about on stage lately. Is like I, I want to kill homeless people in real life, mm-hmm. but I have immaculate control. So I don't. I'm 100% with you. But in Red Dead, <laughs> there are no rules. In Red, Red Red Dead, I can I can go up to the homeless guy outside of the Valentine post office <laughs> who's asking for a little money and pull my gun on him and point it at his face. And then he says... Whoa, whoa, mister. Whoa, mister. And then I'm like, no. Whoa, mister. And then I just pull the trigger until I, until I, until then I have, you know, you can't shoot the homeless in the game. What? Yeah. No way. Not even joking. There's a thing. Like, I can point the gun, I can point the gun, but then click, but then I have to, like, it doesn't. It's like the same thing they do with the kid characters in the game, too. Oh, no, you you can kill the kids. No, you can't. Never, but can you hog time? I never the, tried the, the homeless. Can you hog time and throw them on the train tracks? Yeah, you can hog time. That, that's a thing. I That'd think, be fun, dude. Yeah, the homeless hog time. Uh, if Texas had the homeless hog tie uh, law. You could just yeah. hog time. You can't hurt them, but you could hog time and just leave them somewhere. Yeah, I think that. Uh, <laughs> it's fucked up. I think that. Uh, uh, yeah, they they got so somebody woke was making the fucking game. For oh, for sure, because sure, there's that whole thing about the women. The women's the right. right to vote, which is actually kind of funny because I think that you could just like run them over or something. <laughs> like, yeah, but I, I, I'm I'm playing a high honor character, a high honor role, which means that uh, I can um, I can uh, like I just drove their fucking wagon into town for them and protected them mm-hmm. against the cousins, against the fucking Braithwaites. Yeah. Those shitty Braithwaites. But I'm sorry to derail you, dude. You said you were, uh, you're an addict. And yes. so, so anything like that. So the Dr. Pepper really took place of the cocaine, if we're, um, if we're being real. It's not, not really, because I didn't drink soft drinks for a long time. Like the thing that took place of the cocaine, honestly, was podcasting. Mm. Uh, that was when I got serious about my show. And, uh, like that was in 2017, and I got into Kill Tony around 2018. So once I got into Kill Tony, I started 
Like that was my thing. I, so I was podcasting, and then when I got into Kill Tony, I to, like comedy started being it, and I was like, okay, so this is the thing. So so podcasting, ergo comedy, took over for cocaine. Got addicted to the hang, kind of whether it was online or anything. yeah. By the way, yeah, I'm gonna like this. Do it, dude. But yeah, it is interesting how it doesn't even have to be a substance or sugar or anything. It's like something can just take that for people. Because I, I, I probably have, you know, a, an addictive personality maybe too. And I have, a, you know, I'm addicted to fucking nicotine. and Yeah. And I like to smoke weed. And I think I'm addicted to the hang too a little bit. But... Um, but you know, I, I do see how people that are act like have actual bad addiction problems, how they kind of replace it with something, whether that thing is healthy or not. Yeah. Usually you kind of have to. It, yeah, it's not a choice. Whatever you get into, you're going to become addicted to it no matter what you want to do. The trick is, is to know that is to know that this is an addiction and I probably only have X amount of time with it because mm -hmm. my brain is going to rationalize it as such. And then any any addiction that you have, if you if you've quit things, you're gonna quit this too. Mm -hmm. So I just have to know, like you just have to rationalize. Hey, one day I'm I'm gonna lose the will to do this stuff, and and I just have to appreciate it while it's happening. Mm -hmm. But I don't know, because that that's that's the case with volatile things, right? So the good things you end up keeping, but like the soft drinks, I know that's not a great thing to be into. So one day I'm just going to be like, you know what? I'm done with this. It's such a slippery slope. I've switched drinks. just Canada Dry lately, and I've I've been doing exclusively Canada Dry ginger ale because mm -hmm. that's like that's ginger ale's like a, it's like a hybrid almost. I don't know. <laughs> Is it? It still has thirty grams of sugar syrup. in it. <laughs> yeah, well, twenty six. But <laughs> who's uh, counting? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll take it. But no, nah, it's like that's the kind of thing that uh, I'm like, well, if I'm doing just one thing, like what if I keep it to just Canada Dry? What if I keep it to just ginger ale? Then I feel a little bit better about it because there's no caffeine and it doesn't give me the heartburn so bad. Is this what we're? Yes. Um, um. It doesn't give me the heartburn so bad. It's a slippery slope with that dirty little soda, dude. Because, it's, like, I won't have one for months, like you're saying, but then I'll go to In-N-Out, mm. you know? And what's an In-N-Out burger without a nice, tall, ice-cold Coca-Cola? Only the first one, too. The refill never is good. The refill on the Coke never is good. The, that second one? Yeah. I, it's always the first one that's just, oh, it just hits, and it's just ice-cold, and just burns your fucking throat on the way down. Yeah, I know. And then and then you're at the store and you're like in the in the aisle where I normally only get sparkling water at H E B, and then I just happen to one eighty, and I just see the Coke six pack and I go, why not? You yeah. know, I just had one. It was good. <laughs> why not? And then it's in oh, your yeah. house. And then it's in, then it's in your house. It's available at all times. That's the thing that could make soft drinks more dangerous than the Coke because you can get that from H E B. That's true. You can't get Coke from H E B like like powder. You can't get powder from over there. That's I'm sure there's somebody that works at H E B that's hustling cocaine in the back the bathroom. Oh, on for their sure. Yeah. Like the butcher's not just cutting meats up back there. <laughs> he's got cutting bricks up too. Yeah, dude. He's he's cutting that shit up with that baby oh, laxative. Yeah. Like But um Yeah. So if I could stay away, if I could stay away from the so sodas, I'd probably lose 30 pounds. Because mm -hmm. you're not drinking. You're not getting that beer weight. No. Nah. Yeah. And, and and that's one thing that they don't tell you about when you quit drinking is how much sugar is in alcohol. Mm -hmm. So when you quit drinking, if you drank heavily, your body's going to crave candy. Yeah. Candy and... For me, it was soft drinks. I was talking to Rocky Dale Davis about this uh, a couple weeks ago where he was like, man, I can't stop eating because he quit drinking as well. And he can't stop eating candy. Oh, yeah. Ugh. Soft drinks aren't his thing, but it's candy, dude. Mm -hmm. Just you, you don't realize how much sugar is in booze until you stop and your body is craving that replacement from something that it was getting a lot of. If they could just get fix that. Mm -hmm. If they could give us some kind of natural, some kind of a nicotine pouch that's like a... a counteracts the sugar craving but it's yeah. not giving you sugar right. you know what i mean some some chemical there's got to be a way it's not like it's like our bodies are just wired to just like yep. crave the fuck out of sugar 100 percent. 
And see, that's the thing that I can't. The nicotine I have to be careful with because uh, I get I can't. I, it's hard for me to even hit blunts mm-hmm. when people roll blunts because the tobacco really fucks me up. Yeah, it give it gets me. Uh, it's like a vegan taking a bite of meat or something. Like some, kind somebody of. that quit something for a long time and when they hit it again, it makes them sick. Yeah, kind of, but it, it, the the tobacco like it it gives me like this this vocal thing that I don't normally have and this cough mm-hmm. that I don't normally get from just regular regular flour. Like it's like a oh my god, I can't catch my breath. Yeah, cough. Did you roll that joint? Yeah, dude, you roll the best joints. Look at that fucking yeah. look at this machine quality. Did you roll it by hand? Yeah. No way. Yeah. Before we lit it, it's kind of wrinkled now. But before we lit this thing, it was it looked like a looked like a Marlboro red, it just like the like a perfect American looked like a lucky strike from yeah from the seventies and from Vietnam. I like I, I like uh, I like being good at things that people don't really value anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> I like being really good at yeah like. Uh, like boy, this this guy this guy could really fink, fix a fence. <laughs> or uh Are you good at that? No. <laughs> no. But uh but no, I, I I think rolling rolling joints is like people don't really do that shit no more. Everybody's cause now they make the tubes that you can just pack the shit down right. in, but then that turns everything into like this baseball bat. But then you got at the end of the joint, it's a lot of weed, and then when you inhale it, all the keef builds up down here to this funnel at the end. So when you get to this part of the joint on that, it starts to gunk up in here, and mm-hmm. then you can't. It's better to keep it fully cylindrical, like like perfectly even, like the same size on each end. That's why cigarettes burn so well. Yeah. And that's why this is burning kind of evenly instead of it running is nice. all the way down. And they always fucking run. I hate those kind of big big joints. Bring back small joints, dude. Bring back cigarette sized joints. We don't need well, a big joint. It can joint. still be a big joint. Big joints suck. It can still be a big joint. You heard just, it here. just so long as the front is the same size as the back. Yeah, it could be the size of a fucking <laughs> toilet paper roll. <laughs> I just I just grind up an X amount of whatever, and then mm-hmm. whatever size it comes out, that's what it comes out to. But sometimes they get big. Yeah. Uh but it's that nobody's nobody's really doing that much anymore. I like to roll, and I take my time doing it. Everybody else is just like, "Oh, it took you long enough to do it." I'm like, "Yeah, look at it. It's a work of art. It really is. <laughs> this is my art. It is. It's nice. It you really sh- is. You should you should like start charging charging the rich comics for like a a hand rolled pack of twenty perfect yeah. joints. I like to do that, man. But I I, I <laughs> I burn off the ends, like I just burn the end of it off, You're like a joint like cobbler. Just, kind of, yeah. <laughs> I'd like to be that, of, dude. That'd be sick if you had a fucking workbench, had everything you needed. Well, honestly, I have my, I keep my all my kit. What's in, in your here. bag of tricks? Show us your bag of tricks here. It's get you got it for people listening. You have a Crown Royal, I believe it's a Crown Royal Apple. Yeah, bag. so this bag. is actually uh, 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 everybody always is curious. The main thing that's in here is this: the uh, this is the zigzag <laughs> microphone. Whoa! It's what got is Crown that? Royal fuzz in the end of it. <laughs> this plugs Dude, into my phone. Awesome. This plugs into my phone. No way! And this is awesome. This is actually a gift from my buddy Bonesai, who you know Bonesai, who makes shout the out books. Bonesai. Bonesai. Shout, shout Adrian. out Bonesai, Adrian Cavazos. Um, but Zigzag gave this to him, and they were like, "Hey, give this to somebody who you who you who you think will use it." And I'm so that's that guy. from Zigzag. Yeah, nice dude. They followed me on Instagram and shit, like like weed royalty. Yeah, and I'm like, holy shit, that's fucking awesome. They followed you on Instagram. Yeah, dude, so fanboy moment. This you got, is you got to go around asking people, "Can you roll a joint?" You know what I mean? And just trying to get can you roll a joint standing up? Yeah. All these people on Sixth Street just like have some fake weed or something. You know what I mean? Some some tobacco. You know oh, how yeah. well can you roll a joint? What and else you got in there? Uh, a bow, a power bank. Power bank. That's your little man purse. Do you keep a Crown Royal bag because it reminds you like you don't want to drink again? Does you ever? Do you ever think about that? That's you carry a Crown Royal bag around. Never really thought about it. Uh, I just this is the. 
It's like the perfect vessel. It's like a little wizard's pouch. It, it is it's a little, like a little wizard's pouch. I think this is. is the earliest form of pockets that we pretty much had. Yeah, it is. So, it is like a little invent, like you keep your inventory in it in the video game. Mm -hmm. It's, it's like, uh, how would you guys have been surprised if you saw like a fucking, like, uh, if it were just endless and just like, <laughs> <laughs> you're just like, you pull like this stuff out, fucking... which this is already kind of an unbelievable amount of shit to pull out of this bag. Like, yeah. When you pull this out, that I kind of had that thought. Like, it was a kind of Mary Poppins y. Yeah. You're like, I have, like, okay. I have this my whole here. Arm you know goes what I mean? in there. Yeah. Like,. <laughs> You pull out like pull a, a fucking. Staff. You pull out a volcano, a volcano bag of weed. Yeah, but no, I keep like some, a small amount of like ground up weed in here, which isn't hardly anything, right now. But then I have my little rolling pouch. There's a little, there's a pouch in here that has some weed in it, and then my rolling papers. And I'll show you the trick. Here's the secret to my success. Oh shit! You're gonna you're gonna show us right now. Show us how it's done. Here, just yeah, sure. put that out for a minute. I'm stoned on this one. Here, I don't want to. I'm just going to. You just set it in here. Yeah, there we go. Uh, well, thanks for coming back on the pod, Yonder, Hell by yeah, the way. I'm always, it's always a treat to have you here, man. You bring me great peace, brother. You bring great peace among the scene here. Oh, what is that? That's the secret to my success. Whoa. It's a roller stick, a poker and a roller. You no, roll, it's not roll a roller. Oh, it's just a poker stick. This is just a, a poker. Packer. And just a packer. I don't even think what I have What is that? Any. That looks custom. Is that a shish kebab stick? It used to be a chopstick, <laughs> but I broke it in half and I sanded off this end. <laughs> you have so much time on your hands. Institution. Well, this was this was this. I've had this stick for probably no no lie four or five years. Oh, damn, like dude, it's, I've had it that long. Wow, old reliable. Oh, you can feel. Wow, Ooh. and it's firm, it's waxy you know? almost. It's it almost has too. a waxy feel to it. Like a yeah, it feels like it's coated. I guess it was a chopstick. Yeah, it was a chopstick. But uh, yeah, I got. I don't even know if this will. A little ASMR, dude. A little joint joint rolling ASMR here on the Gorecast. Yeah, all sensories must repeat. <laughs> Is that what that stands for? Nope. Oh, auto sensory <laughs> motor recognition. Uh, uh, no. What's what does ASMR stand for, T? This is going to be the tiniest joint of all time because I hardly have any weed. Uh, a little pinger. Yeah, but that's the thing is like, I, okay, so I don't have a lot in here, but I want it to be si be sort of firm. Autonomous sensory meridian response. Yeah, that's what I said. Weird. Yeah, that's basically what you said. Mm -hmm. Meridian response. Roll it. Twist it. Put it up to the microphone. Here's what we're going to do. <laughs> This is this is prime podcasting, dude. <laughs> Rolling a joint quietly with Yonder Wizard. I don't care what anyone says. This rules, you guys. Rolling a <clears throat> joint quietly with Yonder is the name of my autobiography. <laughs> Rolling a joint <laughs> quietly. It's just like uh, it's just the diaries of uh, the, the inner monologue of a antisocial stoner. Diary of a mad black homeless woman. <laughs> that is interesting that you're. <laughs> You're an introvert, but you're not antisocial. You know what I mean? Well, like I if, like to talk. Yeah. I I really enjoy the communication aspect of life a lot. And it bothers me when other people don't communicate. I'm in a situation where communication is necessary and it's not happening in, a, in another alternate part of my life. And it is the most infuriating thing on the face of the earth. Like with a friend or something? Yeah, and they and you're, you, they're just like you're like, what's going on? They're like nothing, but you know something's going on. Nope, not even that. It's just like, uh, hey, we need a response about something, and there's no response coming. This is the worst that I've ever done because I, I the the you trick, have no weed to work with here. Well, that's the the, the trick is but it supposedly still looks, that you're you're supposed to have a lot. That thing would look like 
complete mush if I had it in my hands. So look at that. That you could that probably still looks nice enough to hold up and show off, given the the small amount of weed that you that you could roll into it. Wow, you're yeah. really crafting it. Yeah, see, like you gotta just. You're really. This is gonna be like a little that. little dog walker they call them. <laughs> <laughs> but then you gotta take the filters. The filter's probably gonna be longer than the joint. <laughs> um. But I, I like to take them apart and double them up. Whoa, some real tech. I like to take them apart and double them up, and then you twist them into like the little W there. Mm -hmm. Kind of like uh, like one of them fans that you make in school. Yeah, kind of. And then just like twist all that off into like a nice little filter. And it's usually the perfect size to... And you can look at the thing and be like, okay, this looks like the nicer side. Oh, and then there's like a roll. Wow. And then it just goes in. And now it's and just a boop. perfect, just a lucky strike, dude. Look at that thing. And even now, even given given the, the short amount of time and the short amount of the small amount of weed, look at that little thing. Hold it up just so people can see the well, the integrity. It's not of done it. yet. Oh. Then you gotta, you gotta singe it. And wow. then look at that technique. So you're lighting the, the extra. Look at that little thing, dude. That's impressive. And then the trick. A quick a quick spit coat, a spit shine. What is this? So you really make love to it before you smoke it. I like it. Have you seen those videos of those guys just like deep throating a whole blunt? Look at that little look at the integrity of that, dude. That's like a little, what are those little marbs called? The little tiny short ones? Yeah, Dude, this that's is like not a even cigarette. a 72. This is like, that's this is, like a... This is like a cigarette from uh, that Bruce Willis movie. A pack of uh, red apples. Uh, fuck, what was that fucking called? Uh, with Chris Tucker, where they're in space or whatever. Fifth uh, Element. They have those cigarettes where they're trying to... You, you remember what I'm talking about? Look, pull up Fifth Element cigarettes, T. They like are trying to quit. They have this machine that like is supposed to help you quit smoking cigarettes or something, and they give and you a smaller like and smaller and smaller one every time. Oh, that's hilarious. Fifth element cigarette. But yeah, that's my uh hit images. Yeah. Yeah, look. They're, they're like all filter. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I love it. They're so tiny. They're like all filter. Look at that. That's going to be great. I'm going to enjoy the fuck out of that. Thank you, Hell Yonder. Yeah. May I? Can I have this? Of course. That's yours. Wow. You put all that love into it. Well, it's, and that's not, that's not as if I'm not, if I'm just sitting at home on my computer desk while I've got a YouTube video going and I'm just, I've got my whole situation there. They turn out a little better if I'm taking my time in the green room. Mm -hmm. But, we're, but that's what's always in my bag for everybody who's curious. Wow. In the in, <laughs> we didn't even get into the bottom half of it. You didn't even start pulling out the lamps and shit. Yeah, well, I didn't want to have to move the truck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, oh, we were talking. Uh, I had Brent Reed in here a while back. We were, oh, we were doing Bama Brent. Bama Brent. We were doing. Uh, shout out Brent Reed. We were doing uh, Southern colloquialisms. Ooh, and I feel like you might have a few of those. Do you have a few of those locked and loaded? Anything you can think of? Like, you know, uh, uh, what is it? You could, you, you can, fuck, I can't remember any of them right now. What's that one? Uh, uh. <laughs> you can, you, 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 you ever had a dream? No, but like, uh, <laughs> um, you can put your, you can put your boots in the oven, but that don't make them biscuits. That's one that Brent gave us. You can put your boots in the oven, but that don't make them biscuits. Yeah, something like that. You can't get blood out of a turnip. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. I swear on a. I swear on a stack of Bibles tall as me. That's what I saw. <laughs> that's a good one. Uh, for I, like, uh, did uh, uh, come hell or high water. Good Lord willing, the creek don't rise. Um, There's just so many good ones. I wish there was a book. There's got to be a book of them somewhere. I like old things that people used to say that they don't say no more. Mm -hmm. 
yonder is one of those things, man. Like that's, I really like that word. I really like the whole. Is that why you adopted it? I I adopted it because like it was just when I it was one of those things where it when I first created my Instagram page it was in like 2013 and back then Instagram would be like if you're having trouble thinking of a name you know think of two things that you like and just mix them together you know just say, and and like for example if you liked the band the Red Hot Chili Peppers and you like the movie Pulp Fiction then you could go red hot pulp fiction or red hot pulp or red fiction or something like that. And I was like, okay, well, I really like the yonder mountain string band and I'm a huge Harry Potter fan. So like maybe yonder wizard. Cool. Mm -hmm. Easy enough. Bam. Created the account. Yada, yada. That was my Instagram handle. But then you became yonder wizard. Yeah. And I, I, I didn't, I don't know. I was really into it, but then that's when I joined. That's always been my username ever since mm -hmm. for on everything. Anything. Ever since I did that on Instagram, that that was just okay. This is what I. This is my username now everywhere, and I just it was always available. I never had to put any numbers or anything behind it. The way I spell it, it's always available. So, uh, I that was my name in VR chat. So Red Band started calling me Yonder. Red Band was the one that called me Yonder. All the Discord people called me Yonder. And then when I came out here, he was the one that started. Everybody was like, ah, Yonder Wizard. Yonder Wizard's here. And I was introducing myself as Kelsey. I signed up all the mics <laughs> as Kelsey. Mm -hmm. Like, that was my that was my thing when I first got here. But then everybody was like, your name's Kelsey? I thought you were Yonder. And then after a while, I just kind of leaned into it. And I was like, you know what? Yonder. Hi, I'm Yonder. Mm-hmm. And then that that became a thing, and now it's been that for however long. Now it's weird when you, like, you're not Kelsey to me. I know, you but know? This, this past weekend, my buddies were in town, and I'm Kelsey to them. Mm, like the old school homies. <clears throat> so they were all like, uh, they were all, they, they, they called me Kelsey the whole time. <sighs> Heartburn's Burger almost King. subsided. The doctor, the doctor's <laughs> coming back for you, dude. It had probably had something to do with the bacon king sandwiches <laughs> as well. Maybe the onion rings. I don't know. Now I'm getting hungry, dude. I'm gonna have to hit the king after this. But yeah, uh, but yeah, the, the, the Kelsey. I think it, it's it's once somebody finds out, like, wait, your name's what? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, it's kind of an unconventional male I name know. too. It really is the, the, one of the most unconventional male names, and that's just for a regular male. Like, your name should not be even, Randy or something. Not me. I feel like, I, I don't know, my middle name is uh, my middle name is Philip, and that doesn't even feel like... You could be a Phil. That doesn't even... <laughs> no. It doesn't even feel right. Yeah. It doesn't even feel right. You get it? It doesn't even feel right. Mm. Mm, good one. <laughs> Hit the applause button to comedy. The orange one. <laughs> no, but uh, <laughs> turn the slider up. I'm just kidding. Don't worry about it. No, nah, that don't even feel right. Uh, but yeah, it, it's. I think that your name kind of does does change things about you, because uh, no one's ever like in Bennisville, South Carolina. There's not a Kelsey mm -hmm. that is a dude. But it made people treat me differently, I think, my whole life. So it kind of got me set up to be to expect that people were going to treat me differently. So now when people treat me differently and like, a, hey, I recognize you kind of way, it's like, this has happened my whole life. I've yeah. always kind of been treated like, well, your name's Kelsey. Yeah. It always sort of made me popular in a way that was like, because it was rare. It's interesting. It created rarity. It's a talking. It's an icebreaker. Yeah. Did did you ever get bullied or anything for having that for for your name being Kelsey, like calling like a girl's name or anything like that when you were a kid? Yeah, a little bit when I was a kid, but then I uh, became a giant. Yeah, and nobody wanted to mess with you. Yeah, and then you were drinking and slapping people. Well, that was a thing, but it was. Uh, <laughs> We talked about that on the other podcast. We yeah, I, I used to slap people when I got drunk. That's how I knew I was doing it right. Um, but, yeah, I uh, I got so big early. Like, I've always, even in, even in, like, kindergarten, I've always been at the back and all the way to the right. 
you know, in all the school pictures. Mm, like tall. I, I've I was always the tallest, biggest kid in my class, mm -hmm. always. And um yeah, that, that it, nobody made fun of you. Nobody wanted nah. to pick a bone with you, dude. And I'm not to toot my own horn. I've always been kind of cool. Yeah. Like kind of with everybody. Chill. Yeah, I've always been <clears throat> been pretty chill. I haven't wanted to like uh I don't know. There's been a couple of times where I've I've gotten in a like like little pushing around fights, but like it was always like it literally felt like someone like me trying to knock a tree down. <laughs> and that's just kind of what it was like. Yeah. And it never ended well for anybody else. And then there was a time when I was, uh, when I was managing the bar down in Merle's Inlet where I had to like get a few people out and that was never a problem. But that, I never really got into any kind of like, Real Tussle. fights, no tussles. Yeah, never got in any real fights because they didn't want to mess with you. I, I I think that that's part of it, but I also think that like I've I've also been kind of avoidant of that. You were a gentle giant. I didn't want to. I'm scared I'll hurt somebody. Yeah, and that I don't want to hurt anybody. Mm -hmm. But uh, I've definitely had to ragdoll a few people out of the bar before back home. <laughs> that's always fun. Yeah. yeah. Pick yeah. them up over your head, throw them out. Oh no! I mean, I'm just I'm I don't know. I, I I had this thing where I would just walk up behind somebody and grab their shoulders and just move them where I need them to go. <laughs> uh, they would just paralyze, and you're just. And if they if they stopped, then I would usually just just transferring files. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Like that's exactly what I'm just drag and drop. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> I'm going to control C you here and yeah. I'm going to control V you here. Yeah, I'm gonna copy and paste your ass. Yeah. Uh yeah, but I it, that that's the thing. And if they any kind of resistance, I, I would just nope. Nope. You're very you're a very passive a very passive strong man. Nope. I couldn't imagine you just getting fucking I couldn't it's, imagine you seeing red. It's not fun. <laughs> tell you that but much. It, but it's happened. Oh, it's happened. But <clears throat> when you were drinking, maybe. Yeah, I was drinking one night. There was a guy who um you ever you ever hear that show um Fuck Party Down South? Mm -mm. It was a shitty television show. I think can it you, came can out. Can you pull on, up at Google Images T Party Down South? Uh it, it, yeah, party down south. It TV was like show. a. It was a thing they did. I, I forget what it might have been on CMT, or something, but they were filming a season in Merle's Inlet, my town, back home, and one night they were at the bar that I managed, Uncle Tito's, <laughs> and um. They. Uh, the one of the guys that worked on the crew. Yeah, season one of Party Down South was like, uh, here, go down to this one down here, down, yeah, is that oh, yeah. on the right maybe the big big dude? No, no, no. This was a guy on the um, on the crew. He wasn't. Oh, was it like the real world where they did different cities? Yeah. Okay, type in what Myrtle Beach, Myrtle's Inlet, a oh, Myrtle's Inlet, M U R R E L L S. Merle's Inlet. And then, uh, oh, yeah, there they go. One of these chads got squirrely with you? No, it was honestly a guy that was on the crew, and oh, okay. he just got blackout drunk. And, uh, so it's like the real world or something. Yeah, hey, that's, uh, is that what it is? Is that what it was? They put him in a house or something? I've never yeah, heard of this. They were in a house. It was like a real world. Um, but yeah, they uh that's Maddie over there in the green. She was awesome. Um anyway, yeah, they they put them all in a house real world style. This one guy on the crew came up and he was blackout drunk. Apparently it was like the anniversary of his dad's death or something like that. And he was blackout 
and he started he started like like pushing people around and then it got to the everybody knew everybody there mm-hmm. so those guys were outsiders and it was one of those right, things small town so a lot of the guys that were regulars at the bar started walking around and being like hey you know you're not i'd be careful if i were you you're not amongst friends kind of thing you know you're not we don't right we don't it's fuck us, around it's you like against that us. here buddy and there's more of us than there is you and then I saw everybody else start moving in, and my situation was in South Carolina, and and plus in this town, I knew every cop, I knew everybody. So if in, in no matter, I knew who was working that night, I knew who was gonna show up, mm-hmm. and I could just be like, everybody knew me from managing the club, but also being in the band. So I was like, hey, this is what happened everything's fine don't take the guy to jail whatever but so i went out there and he had by this point pulled a knife and i wasn't threatened because it was a swiss army knife and i don't know how to explain it but that wasn't scary because it was a swiss army knife like right it's 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 a little it's a kid's it's it's a child's toy it's a child's play thing it it was red (laughs) Like, how, how how much more be, non-threatening could you be? I'd be scared of a red knife. <laughs> hey, hey, get back. You, like, miss it yeah, the first you, time? You miss the fingernail thing the first time? Yeah, what are you going <laughs> to trim my yeah, cuticles? Yeah, here, T, give me the one we have one right there. <laughs> here, toss it to me. Oh, no, see, this is that's like an old timer. Yeah. Oh, yeah, but just imagine this is like a red child's toy. It's like, hey, wait, hey, get That's get, actually an old timer, isn't it? Get back. <laughs> Is that an actual old timer? I don't know what this is. Let me see it. Um, but he had a red pocket knife and he was swinging it at you, or what? Yeah, he had a red pocket knife and he was kind of swinging it at everybody. But um, I went out and I grabbed I grabbed his hand that had the knife in it and I squeezed it until he dropped the knife. <laughs> and then I grabbed the back of his neck and kicked his feet out from under him and buried his face into the gravel out front and I told him that he was going to calm down and that was his only option. <laughs> See, I just can't picture you doing that, dude. Yeah, You're I know. just a different guy now. Isn't that weird how it's just like... like yeah. I feel like uh, Merrill Inlet yonder is just not the same. Kelsey from Merrill Inlet is not, is, <laughs> hey, bro, is not yonder from, let me tell from you, Austin. Kelsey Hudgens, you talk about a boy named Sue... You know, it it, it it does that that making you tough thing. That is kind of a, that's a thing. And I mean, I, I'm I'm emotionally soft sometimes. I think because I did a lot of experimental drugs <laughs> when I was coming up. But it, it, otherwise, like I got pretty tough pretty quick mm-hmm. out there being named Kelsey. Yeah. So. It only took one time for people to figure out not to bring not to bring that up. Well, that's the thing about being great at anything is all people have to do is see you do it once for you to be that, you know? Mm -hmm. So I try to do the same thing musically. Like I'll kind of, for secret shows, I kind of phone it in a little bit on some, on most of them, to be honest, just because I'm not really... You don't want to steal the show. Well, no, not just not that. It, I don't. I I, I kind of do want to steal the show, but it's 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 more to me about like I can't set an expectation to my audience that I'm not always going to meet. Right. Like I don't want to turn it all the way on every time. Because then they'll expect that every time. They'll expect that every time. And you're kind of just also trying to chill and play music and have fun still. You don't want to be sweating like, oh, this has to be my performance of a lifetime every time. I mean, not that you don't do the best you can do every time. But nah. Just, you get what I'm saying? It's like you but, don't. And you, I don't do the best I can do every time. Yeah. Like. By design. Purposefully. Yeah. Like I intentionally don't do the best that I can do every time just because I. I 
it's a knob for me. I can turn it all the way on if mm -hmm. I like. Sometimes I turn it all the way on. Like if there's somebody in the room I'm trying to show off for, like I'll I'll turn it all the way on. Mm. There was a time we had a show. Uh, Bobby Flacco did a, a Bobby and Friends from Nether Hour. From Nether Hour. Yeah. Bobby did a Nether and Friends Nether Hour. I mean a a fucking Bob Flacco and Friends at uh, Sunset. And I just so happened to be upstairs for it. And normally I'm just like, nah, you you got you you kids have fun, you know? Like you got you guys have fun, you know. But this night, Tony was there and Kim Congdon was there. You wanted to turn it on for him. And Brian Holtzman popped in mm -hmm. and like there was like there was a few like there's a few people there who I was like, okay, let's let's do it. Yeah, we're, let's do this we're, thing. We're putting the fancy clothes on tonight. And you know, I got up there with the hair down and the fan just, blowing. The fan wasn't on like oh, okay. there, so I mean, it was just like, yeah. But I knew the fan wasn't blowing, so I moved it myself. Mm. You know, like I, I yeah. You were I was it. not really, but it was. I did the thing. I I turned it all the way on. Mm -hmm. I tur I literally turned it all the way on, and it was just like that. I, I was just I looked up like through my hair, mm -hmm. and I look up and I just see like Holtzman and Kim and Tony and those yeah. guys just kind of like you got them. I got them. Nice. I got them, and then like now. I think that they like view they view they'll view me differently now, I think. Which Tony had already seen it kind of. Mm -hmm. Um cuz I got up and jammed with Nether Hour a couple times way back at Vulcan. Like You're basically I, passed as a musician in their eyes. They're like, "Oh yeah, Yonder's a good fucking rock solid musician." Well, yeah, but I mean they they're like, "Oh, I so they're the They'll see somebody who gets into comedy and comes in, and they're like, "Oh, well, this guy's struggling a bit. Mm -hmm. Like, what, what, what's the deal here?" But then they'll like see the one thing, like, and then they're like, "Oh, that's his thing. Okay, yeah, I see now." Mm -hmm. But Tony had already kind of knew that because I sent Tony videos of me doing some Pink Floyd solos from back home. So he knew that I could do that then. But seeing it in person, I think, is a whole different thing. That's a whole different beast. Yeah. And for but, people that don't know what we're talking about, or two that are just, just, you know, tuning into you and stuff and who you are, <clears throat> Red Band does the secret show. Most people know what that is. And you'll, yeah. you'll open the secret show with music. Right. Every night, most nights? Every Thursday. Every Thursday now. Yeah. You used to alternate it with the band, I think. Yeah. Right? Well, it was. Uh, Nether, Nether Hour and Trace of Lime mm -hmm. used to alternate. And then uh, Nether Hour picked up a residency on Thursday night at Copperhead Club, I think. So they couldn't do Thursdays anymore. So I started covering for Nether Hour. And um, then I was alternating with Trace of Lime. Mm -hmm. So every other week it would be me, every then Trace of Lime. And that was always a good time. And but then Trace of Lime, I had to cover them for like a couple of months. Mm -hmm. And then bef after covering them for a couple months, their lead singer ended up having to have some surgery on oh, his no. vocal cords. So I just kind of started doing them every week. Mm -hmm. And then they came back and did a couple more here and there. But um, yeah, it, it ended up being just me. And yeah. plus, they're a full band, and having a whole band, plus like girlfriends and such in the right. green room versus it's having just me, and yeah, a and buddy they know. Yeah. yeah, I think that that is a more. It's your territory now. It's your turn. No, no, no. It's, it and over. it's nothing about territory or anything yeah, like that. I, mean, I don't want to think of it like that. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, it's just I, I really that's my little. One day of one day a week, I get to do the thing that I'm here to do, and that's hang out with the people that I used to see on Instagram mm -hmm. and play rip some music. And then you go up and do comedy too now on on some of them, right? No, nah, I usually just, just a cruise show. 
Um, that they do at sunset. Yeah, I do that. That's actually tonight. Oh, nice. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that'll be tonight. I, I uh, do in between songs. I'll I'll do a couple of jokes. Kind of do what I always did back home, right? Which is my version of phoning it in, where I'm like, I'll choose a few songs. Okay, these are the ones I'm going to do tonight, and then just in between, I'll just talk to the crowd, try to warm them up, get them in the get them in the habit of like joke, laugh, mm-hmm. joke, just laugh, make them chuckle, and then rip. A try song. to, and then I'll play a, and that's the one thing I like to do. I don't like to do uh, funny. Like I, I can I can be funny when I'm doing songs, but I don't care to do funny songs. Right. I like to do real songs. That's tough. There's only a few people that can nail the funny song thing. I mean, it is if you don't nail it, it's bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like if you go up there with the with the intention of being funny, like you can miss that mark. Mm-hmm. Even if you're a great musician. But if you want to go up there and like change the way somebody feels in any way, that's an easy mark to hit if you're a good musician. Mm-hmm. So I'd rather do a serious song and then try to make them laugh in between because if I don't make you laugh in between, well, here's another well, song. Well, then they already trust you. They're like, this guy's good at what he, whatever he's doing up there because you played a good song. You know what I mean? And then they trust you. They, you they, you kind of got them. You well, know that, what I mean? That's the sort of the uh uh what's the word I want to use? Safeguard. What happened? The safeguard? Kind of it, it's a little safeguard, but it's also like the same uh shit. I I I love it's words like and I know there's a perfect word for this where it, it that same feeling correlates to what I was for the thing when Tony and them saw me playing and turning it all the way on. Mm. So it's like, okay, they trust me. So I had to turn it because they hardly ever see me Mm -hmm. like that. So when I turn it all the way on now, that is like, okay, you don't just trust me for this moment that I have with you. You now just, you now trust for life. Right. Like you, when I'm up here, you know that I'm going to do good. And and not only that, but I Hold think that own. it's important too to like to get up there and like I'll I'll see people on a Thursday night that'll come back for a Friday show and I'll be checking them in and they were like, Hey, weren't you up there last night? And I'm like I'm like, Yeah, that was fun, right? And they're like, Yeah. <laughs> like that that was Who and then, are you? Well then they're they're like, Well, what are you what are you what are you doing here? Yeah. You know, what are you doing? giving me a wristband for the what are you doing out here? Are mm-hmm. you on are you gonna play on this show too? And I'm like, nah, I just do that on Thursdays. And then they're like, well, why don't you do like, man, you're you're fucking good at that. Why don't you do that more often? I was like, well, because I'm good at it. Because I know I'm Yeah, I want to do something hard. I want to be challenged. I've already beat the game. I want to do side quests now. Yeah. I want to hundred percent the map. That's kind of that's kind of a lot how I feel too about, and that's not to diminish you know comedy as a side quest. It's just it, that's it's just a new thing for me. It's for me I like to think of it instead of a side quest in that same analogy. It's a yeah. new, it's a new character build. I'm starting Skyrim over, right? And this time I'm going to be a battle mage. Last already, time I was the last time I was a warrior with brute strength. This time I want to I want to hang back. Yeah. I want to shoot arrows and cast spells. You know what I mean? Yes. And that's what we're. That's what. That's why I'm trying to. I've already been a bard. It's time to be a wizard. Yeah, I want to be a druid this time. Yeah, you know what I mean. I want to do something different, and it's fun. You know what? And I've Fuck had it, a, dude. I'm I'm going orc. Yeah. Well, I feel like the music to me <laughs> is the orc, dude. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like your music mu- is orc music. I guess you're right. <laughs> you're right. But uh, but yeah, that's it, that's how I've felt too. Is it? You could be battle mage music too, though. Yeah, I guess if if it was more folk metally. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I don't know the subgenres enough to. My music is orc music. <clears throat> yeah, but uh, but that is kind of how I feel too. And I've, it's funny that you say that because I've used that same analogy a lot, where it's. You know, with the music thing, it's like especially after that last big tour that we did with the yeah. big when the big band took us on tour, it was like that's fucking, 
that's the main quest. Right. Is go on the tour of the big band. And that will that happen again? Hopefully, maybe someday. We're going to keep doing music. I'm going to keep never going to stop doing music. But now I want to do. I never going to stop. I ain't never going to stop doing music. But now, now I want to do this. And this is more challenging. After over right. a de- after 14 years of doing music or whatever, yeah. it's kind of like that's that's become what stand up is to these guys that kill. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? It's like the muscle memory. And so now I want to do the thing that. You know, of course, I'm looking over at the thing going, man, that fucking looks hard. I want to try that. Yeah. You know? And so, yeah, it's been the same thing for me. It, I, what's it like? Because this just happened to me, too, where, like, I hadn't done a show in a while. Hadn't done music in a while. And I know you do it every Thursday, but maybe you feel this weekly, the same kind of thing. But it, when you're doing stand-up, stand-up, stand-up all the time and you're new at it like I am, yeah. it's like, you know, I'm just trying to dial in my fucking... 10 minutes you know what right. i mean i set a goal for this year i wanted to do i wanted to get my five minutes down and i wanted to do more actual shows at venues yeah. and more paid gigs and, and and you know on top of the mics right and i i passed that fucking finish line in march and so now i'm like oh shit well now we gotta adjust the goals right you know what i mean and then in so I've done a bunch more of those shows and little, you know, just little. And now I have like seven solid minutes, right? Yeah. And so I'm like, now I got to work on the tent. So it's like it just keeps building up, you know what I mean? But there's a lot of eating shit in that process. Yes. Which, which, I don't know about other folks, but you and I don't eat shit when we play music. Yeah. We just don't. We there's no. It's not a. It's not an op. It's not an ingredient in our in our in our cupboard. There's no shit in in our cupboard. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. And when I go up, when we go up there, we demolish. And it's like I did that. I did the same. And it's not even to like you know toot my own horn. It's just what it's what I've been doing. If I if I didn't do that, there'd be something wrong. That's exactly it's what, it's how what I, I say it's it. what I've been doing. And if I I'd be doing something wrong if after over a decade of doing it, I wasn't great at it it would and be weird it would be bad i should have quit yeah. and and so it's like it's weird to after not after doing the stand-up and eating shit and you're like oh well you know we all noise says you know t- tastes good eating shit tastes good you know what i mean it yeah. just you got to get the reps in and stuff and but it's it's rough it's not the same uh feeling of it's not the same dopamine rush it is it, it is and it isn't like it's not as potent of a dopamine rush as when maybe when you play music because you're killing every time when you're playing music but then with stand up it's like you get the rush of going up but then it's sometimes swiftly met with a punch to the jaw you know what i mean and you're like oh yeah i fucking suck at this oh yeah i've only been doing this for a year and a half and then but to get up on stage after a six months of doing that a year of doing that and no music and then to rip a show a sold out show in my hometown oh man it feels so fucking good and yeah. it just reminded me it's like all right so how long have i been doing the music thing over 10 years okay so maybe when i'm there maybe that's like then i came back to austin ready to eat shit at a mic because i know that hopefully in 10 years it'll be better you know yeah. what i mean I like I th- I feel like I get more out of a really good comedy set than I do a really good music set. Totally. 100%. Because I know like you said, I there is it, you remember how Dave Chappelle talked about the uh uh man, I'm so good at this. <laughs> you know, he's like I never think this is going to go bad. Like every time yeah. I get on stage, I think this is gonna go. This is gonna go well. Yeah, I'm not there yet with comedy. I'm not there yet with comedy, but I've been there for years musically. Yes, yeah. For like, I mean, like I started doing this thing when I was 13 years old. Started my first band when I was 13. Me and my buddy Chris, and uh, I've been doing it that long, and I will be 38 in a couple months. So like. That's I've been doing this that long. It I've always said, just like you say, it would be weird if something that I've been doing for over twenty years didn't go well. Yeah, and I don't even remember what it feels well. like to have the same sensation that I have before I go and do five minutes at Maggie Mays to nobody. Yeah, I don't remember what it feels like to have that sensation with music. No, well, I do. I, I no, it's been it's been too it's been too long for me. I think where I don't remember like, you know, maybe a, a second of it right before I go on stage. But it's like 
most of the time it's like, all right, we're going to go fucking do this thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's pretty chill. But it's like, that's maybe I think what I'm chasing with stand-up is the, but, the them butterflies. Because I get them every time. Even when I'm going up at an open mic and there's not a lot of people there, it's like, whew. You know what I mean? I, hey, is this going to go well, like you said? Well, that, I think, is the... That is is how you'll get to the punch in the face, and then that thing starts saying you suck at this. You're not, you're not ready for this. You're yeah. not doing this thing. So what I've started, and Patrice said it a long time ago, man, is you got to be comfortable with the silences. You might end up, you might just not be at your punchline yet. You, the thing that you think is funny might not be the funny part of your joke. Mm-hmm. And that's the hard part that I had to learn is sometimes, and to expect, sometimes they're going to laugh in a spot where I don't expect them to. And if that happens, then that's just where your funny is. And then that, then now your punchline is a tag. They'll tell you. They will. Mm-hmm. They'll tell you. But I, I do my best to like, and I don't, I'm not conventional with how I do it. Like, I don't have, like, a, okay, I'm going to do this, 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 and this. I rarely ever have my notes open before a set. I, I like, hardly ever open my notes before a set, ever. And because the second I look through them and I just see, oh, no, there's just too much decision. So I'll have a couple of ideas where I'm just going to go out there and I'm going to say something and see how this goes. And hopefully they laugh at it. And if they don't, then we'll try again next time. But I try my best to when I open my phone that all I have open is my voice recorder. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just start recording right before they introduce me and I go out and I say something usually jarring right out of the gate or something that I hope is funny. Like I, I got an opener I've been using lately that I know works mm -hmm. and I get come out there and get them with a quick laugh. And then I just go into whatever. I have like four or five topics that I can choose from now that I've been trying to sharpen the edges off of. And it just, I don't know, just, I, I, I try not to think about it. I try not to think about – I try not to give myself the potential for it to go bad. Mm -hmm. I remove that as an option. Like, it's not it, – like, I don't think that this – like, if they don't laugh, maybe it's not bad. Maybe it's not bad if they don't laugh. Like, I know that's the goal. That's what you're supposed to do. But what if – you're just going up there and them not laughing is sharpening your joke. Yeah, it's yeah, it's teaching That's you. That's just part of learning. It. Like it's not the it's not each individual set, it's the collective. It's not transactional. It's not a transactional yes. relationship with yes. the crowd where where laugh equals I did good. Or yeah. because well, that's well, I mean it does, but but it but maybe I'm trying to understand what you're saying, I guess. Okay, to them it is like okay, so if they're not laughing, maybe they maybe they're not getting anything out of this. But I know, okay, me doing this joke like this, maybe I was looking at the ground too much. Mm -hmm. Maybe I was maybe maybe they they found me dishonest in something that I said. Mm -hmm. But you learn that about yourself. So that in turn makes something that you would normally say that went bad, that makes it good. Is learning from whatever right. it the was. Experience, like the experience is is valuable. There's meat, right. There's meat to the experience. There's even if, something even here. If it's it's not a total loss. It's not a perfect pelt, right. but we still got the meat. <laughs> yeah, the carcass was poor. You've been playing Red Dead too much. Yeah, I know. <laughs> My analogies are all Red Dead now. Um, but no, I I, I enjoy that. Like, but Patrice said this thing that I, I bring up a lot. You have to be comfortable in the silences mm -hmm. because maybe in, if you say something and you're trying to be funny and the crowd doesn't laugh and then you sit and wait for a second, then you just told the crowd, hey, that was my joke, and you didn't laugh at it. So now they're double, doubling down 
not getting mm. what you're talking about. If you just move past it after they don't laugh, they just think, okay, it's coming. Yeah. And that just means it's not here yet. That just means we're not there yet as far as the laugh. The yeah. funny hasn't gotten there yet. I've noticed I do a thing that I just recently realized that I got to stop doing with some of my jokes where it's like, when I go to like do some like one of the punchline things or one of the setups, you know, it's like I'll be I'll individualize a person. I'll be like, that'd be pretty cool, right, dude? Yeah. You know what I mean? And I thought that that's fun for me because I, I like to see that yeah. person's reaction. But I think what it does is it makes like it like makes the rest of them feel like left out or something or like I'm not performing it to everybody. Yeah. So it like draws the it makes something weird. It 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 break something that that it's always better if i just do it out you know what i mean or if i do acknowledge somebody really quick i move right back because that's you know what i mean like you could throw you could say that'd be pretty cool right dude you know what i mean and yeah. then and then go right back to the rest of the crowd but what i'll end up doing is i'll go that'd be pretty cool right dude and then i do the the rest of the fucking joke to this one dude <laughs> you know what i mean and ah, i'm just staring at this one guy i see performing for this one dude and I think that also probably comes from hitting shitty open mics where there's only one real person that's not a comic in there. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? And you're kind of performing to one guy. I think that's just like a bad habit. It's like sucking your thumb or something. You know what I mean? It's like a, it's like yeah. a, a, a baby stage habit because you get used to like, okay, well, there's four people I know that aren't going to laugh at any of this shit because they've heard it 20 times. You know what I mean? So I'm going to just talk to this one guy or this little group of people. And then but when you do that, when you're at a show and there's 10, 15 people, real people in the, the whole at the Vulcan or something and then you're just talking to this one guy it's like yeah it doesn't hit the joke doesn't hit the same way I don't know no I, I'm I learning I'm mean. in my baby steps dude I'm having a blast too that's the thing you, mean, you, you mentioned something earlier I wanted to I would touch on is those voices that say you're bad at this and stuff yeah I don't really I don't get those and maybe maybe that's not it's not that I I, I don't get like the you suck at this you're you're bad at this like in a negative way it's like you got to keep working on this they're my oh, voices just, my voices are more constructive, but I know that there's a lot of people that have a bad set. When I have a bad set, I go, oh, I had a bad set. I'm going to look over it, and I'll make changes or whatever. You know what I mean? But it's like it doesn't defeat me the way it defeats some of my friends or some, yeah. you know, some people that are just – they have a bad set, and, like, it wasn't even that bad. You know what I mean? And then they'll be like, fuck, man, I'm fucking this yeah. – I suck or whatever. And it's like, dude, be, quit beating yourself up about it. It's like – it you know I always judge I feel like I judge people on two things when I really know their set you know yeah it's like how how well did did you get through the material sometimes if you're at an open mic it's like the 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 crowd isn't a good gauge of how good the material is you know what I mean and, yeah and then you've seen stuff hit really hard in good rooms or whatever and so I've been like you know how did you get through it did you get through it the way I know would kill for you know, from what I've seen, and then how did the crowd? It's like respond to it. There's like two, yeah, two grading systems. I don't know. You shouldn't beat yourself up so much, just in general, if you don't do as good as you want to do on something. I agree. I, I was just kind of making a reference to you saying you get punched in the face, and then mm, all of a right, sudden right. you're like, "Oh, I suck. This right, is going right. well." Like, you're right. That's what I, I did meant. say that. Yeah, that's what I was. Ta that's what I was referencing. But uh, I feel this, I, and this is a super controversial thing and i think i've said this every single podcast that mm -hmm. we've done together i don't i think that sometimes doing too much open mics is bad for your comedy yeah i, th I could see that i think that like and and, and that's people are like what do you mean open mics are spots you got to do do spots to get better and i get that but I think you got to do spots in front of normal people. If you're just going up in front of the same, like, 20 comedians all the time, that ends up doing – and maybe I, – I, I should specify. I'm speaking personally from this. Mm -hmm. That makes me feel worse about my material and makes me feel worse about being a comedian. I feel the same way, and I wonder if that's because we're from music. So like our po like we're used to having more positive reinforcement, you know what I mean? It, like in shows going well, and then that keeps us kind of excited to keep doing it. And then when we do, when we go hard for a week straight, going up four times a night, and most of those are at open mics with only other comics, it makes us in that that nobody's laughing, and you feel like fuck, you know what I mean? It's like I don't know. Well, it's I've, like I wonder if we're wired a little different than I, maybe somebody who only does comedy. Maybe, but I've seen it in the scene here where there are comedians who go up 
every chance they can. They're signing up for every single mic. They're they're like doing their best to write new material, but they're surrounded by their comedy friends who now they're in a they're in a crew and they're surrounded by a bunch of yes men mm-hmm. who are like, Oh, that's funny, or or your friends are laughing at the stuff that you're saying because it's funny to them because it's an inside joke thing, but it's not gonna necessarily be good for like a crowd outside of your circle. Yeah. So I see that too much with a lot of the comics that are coming around. And I, I just kind of look at that as like, man, after a certain amount of time, all of these comedians are just going to sound the same. And for somebody who sees as much comedy as I do, it's easy for me to notice. Right. It's easier for me to notice like, hey, dude, like this is an echo chamber almost. And like it's and and I'm not. I'm I'm not speaking about anybody specifically. Sure. But there's just I've noticed that after somebody goes around to a lot of those things all the time and just kind of doesn't try to get better and doesn't have the, it becomes like cutting yourself it's or something. Literally like <laughs> it, beca- a, it becomes it's some a kind thing. of thing. But yeah. you've seen it. Yeah. I know you've seen it. I've, it's happened to me. Where I've gone the weeks that I've gone I've always said the weeks that I've gone the hardest. You know, and put up my reps. Yeah. You know, and done a couple times a night for six, seven days in a row. It's yeah. by the end of that seven days, I'm doing the worst I've ever done. Oh, dude. I'm doing I'm doing the worst. Maybe I remember stuff really good, but I don't really have that much of a problem with that because from music you have to remember shit. Yeah. So it's like, you know, I remember shit really good, maybe, and I'm not saying the whole experience was bad for me. It's probably really good for me to have that experience. Right. But but it's as far as how I'm doing mentally and on stage, not as the worst after going the hardest. Yeah. So I don't I, know. I don't know what I don't know what that is. And sometimes I'll go two weeks and I'll go and somebody put me, give me a spot at Vulcan on our show. And I'm like, oh, it's been a week or two since I went and, and you know, since I was going hard, maybe a couple days here, you know, one once or twice a week, which is not good. But and then and then I'll go up and do good. And I'm like, oh dude. Oh, like, and that's almost. Do you find it you do that more often than not? That you yeah. do better after you haven't gone up for a while? Kinda. I don't want to say. Too. I don't want to say because that's a naughty no no. You're like you're not supposed to. You're not supposed to exactly. promote that. It's exactly. a naughty no no. You're not supposed that. to promote that. But but then I'm like, but that's my experience though. Sometimes that's where I think the 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 ire that I have with that is in there. Yeah, is that. You're not supposed to promote that. You're supposed to go up and do all the spots that you can, and beg to get on every show that you can get on. And I think it I maybe is not. A, I that. think maybe it's not a one size fit all diet. Exactly. You know what I mean? It's not the same I, for I everybody. Don't, I don't think it's a, it's it's like telling somebody what to eat. It's like yeah. what's your chemical makeup? You know what I mean? Like what's your what is your brain chemistry like? Maybe it's yeah. not good for you to be going out and eating shit at open mics every single night. Right. F- three times a night. It's not the same for know. everybody. And it's not good for my mental mental. But that's but the opposite side of that coin is you get so you get lazy, then you then you're then you're leaning on your skills a little bit maybe or something or you're you know what I mean you're oh I've been doing stage stuff for over ten years so I have a little yeah you know I'm comfortable or whatever, and then you're like oh and then it gets then you go up then I get go up on a show at Vulcan after a week of not doing something and then and then it doesn't go as good it's fine I survive but it's not as good as the last time and then I'm like oh well maybe so I need to go. A little harder than I was, you know what I mean? Like sometimes yeah. those moments where you get that W after not doing, not doing it for a minute, taking a break from doing the mics or whatever. It's like then then you get a little too confident sometimes. Well, I don't know. My thing is I'm already lazy, <laughs> uh, so that's nothing to me at all. Like I know, I'm already fucking lazy. Um, but my thing is I feel like after I don't go up for a while, I have this energy that needs to get out. So I'll be like, man, I hadn't gone up in a while, dude. I got it's I got, like it's like semen got, retention. Yeah. It's, it's kinda like semen then, retention. And then you know, and, and but when I go up, like I usually find that I do well. I find that I go up and I do well. And it's like, I just don't think that, I don't think that for me, going up every chance that I can is good for me because that's how I lose. If I do something too much, 
that's when I lose interest. Mm. I lose interest I when I think about that. when I do something too much. I'm like, ah, oh, this okay. So this is just I'm phoning it in now every single time, just like I do most of my music gigs. And I'm not good enough at comedy to just phone it in. Is that why you don't do music all the time then? Yeah, because you see all these people, these guys in these bars, you know, doing cover songs, and I'm like, you know, yonder could shit. I could do better than some of these. You know what I mean? Like, there's some of these bar music like the people in there playing on a monday at you know whatever buckaroo saloon down there it's like you could easily be one of those guys raking in oh yeah doing that full time and oh yeah. gigging you could be gigging 100%. you could be michael gonzalez level gigging going on tour with big guys as a guitar you know what i mean but you don't want to do that because you don't all want to go all into one thing mm. or not that but it's like you don't you get lose interest if you go too too far is that true yeah, kind of like I, I feel the same doing the music, way. doing the cover thing. Like, dude, cornbread. I, hang on to that. Uh, doing the cornbread thing, man. The band back home. Uh, it, it just we did that. We were banned from like 2009 until 2021. So, uh, we that was a that was enough. Yeah. You know, that, that's 12 years with the same two dudes doing probably a variation of 30 to 50 songs for 12 years. And, you know, we're sprinkling a couple of new things in here and there or whatever, but, like, that's that's a lot. And I lost interest in it. And I think that, and plus with the agoraphobia that I have, where I'm like... uh. You're familiar with agoraphobia. It's like I, you, I don't remember what it is. It's like you you have a fear of leaving the house. Oh. You have a fear of entering yourself Shit. into situations that could problematically go wrong. So you automatically set up every single situation as like you start from worst case scenario and backtrack. Damn. With everything. That's what you do. I have that. It's like a form of OCD or something. Hey, it's it's a tremendous. I, I have. Uh, not severe OCD, but I'm severe ADD, uh, minor OCD, and uh, agoraphobic uh, coupled with panic. That's the official diagnosis. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Anything else? <laughs> <laughs> little bipolar. <laughs> uh, only when you're just, only when he's drinking. A little paranoid. Um, nah, but uh, but yeah, that's all of that. I, I've marked a few places as my safe space or whatever, but like all of that, it makes it, 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 it what what everybody else would view as like this is fun. Where all of your friends are here, we're hanging out. Like let's go, let's go do a mic. Yeah. What is fun for someone else is hell for me. Yeah. And I, I and and people like to take it personal. Like, well, why don't you want to hang out with us? And right. I never. Like that's not it's not about that, and it's never been about that. But people like to make it about that, like make it about themselves, and like, what did I do? What, what you which I like think comes from a me? place of care as well. Oh like, yeah, they don't want to they don't want to think that they're putting off bad energy and right. making people not like them or something. Right, and, but and they don't know that you're like, dude, this is this goes deeper than you, like, brother. buddy. I'm, I'm this is deeper I'm, than you, brother. I'm fighting my own demons here <laughs> every minute. You have no idea, like they, I, I told Mumford Davis the other day, like they're, they're, alcoholics like to say one day at a time, but it's one moment at a time, mm -hmm. and it's that way with everything. Things are not like on a day to day basis or whatever. They're a moment to moment basis. On like some days. Everything could be going great, but one little thing can fall out of place, and the whole house of cards just falls. And when that happens, like I, I start, I fall into a state of panic. I don't know what to do. I start to like, uh, it, it starts to spill over into other people's comfort, you know. Yeah. But comedy is a safe place for you from from all that. I mean, Sunset Strip is a yeah. safe place from all of that, uh, and and but there's no place that's like. I guess being on stage is a safe place from all of that. Yeah. Like, just the stage in general. Because, I mean, dude, that's where I eat. Mm hmm I was bred and forged on a fucking stage, dude. <laughs> like, this is what I do. It's true. I've seen it. So, like, I, I, it, that's a thing. A stage is a stage. 
That's it. A stage is a stage and a crowd is a crowd. People are just people. It don't matter where they are. But do you feel like you'd be bored if you were just doing music, only music all the time? Because yeah. I, I kind of feel that of way course. too. I want and to I think die. that's And I think that's what comedy is just like a perfect... When you told me to go do comedy, you're an important person to constantly have back on here to check in with because you're, you're the one that after that first podcast we did where we totally I botched the the video or whatever, you you told me to to you might have even told me on that podcast to just you know do it, just go and do it. You've been doing music, just go just go do it. Just I did it. See if you like and, it, but you were also somebody that had done it before that I could look at that enjoyed it was having fun, and I'm like okay. I'm gonna try it, and you were like, "Go talk to Alden." You know, you're, again, like the Deku tree, you gave me a quest. You know what I mean? You gave me a quest, oh, and bro, you were like, I got "You were like quest, travel, energy. travel to the Lucky Duck, yeah. <laughs> and ch- and you'll check in. You'll press X to check in with Alden. You yeah. know, and Alden has, and he's like, "Well, you know, <laughs> welcome." <laughs> it tells you, so uh, go Andrew do a dick comedy, joke. It'll uh, go horribly. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that is a good Alden yeah. impression. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Pretty good. No, you got to do the little. You got to do the yeah. little bob. He does like a bob with his shoulders sometimes a little bit. Oh, oh. big fat cock. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, but the, but but yeah. I and so I wondered if you felt the same way about that because I feel like it filled a void because I knew I wanted to do something like different, but still in the same but like performative. Yeah. But I didn't want to be the guy that was in all the bands. You know the guy that has five bands? Yeah. I never want, I've always had one band. But I a was, one, I'm a one band man. I'm I a one woman guy. man and a one band man. I played with several. Not a one man band, but a one band man. Yeah. You one know? band man. I'm a one band man. Only one for me. Man, I did. I, I, I There was a time I was playing with Cornbread. I was playing. Cornbread's with, the best band name, by the way. Dude, we were we you always were gloss thing, over man. it, but that that that's huge. That, that's we were a, that thing, name could man. be huge. Cornbread, dude. We were regionally famous. <laughs> like it was a thing. Like we would. Oh shit! Cornbread's coming. Yeah, <laughs> them corn. Oh, oh man, cornbread. Like, and there was a thing where other bands would like mix songs together and they say, "Hey, we're gonna cornbread this thing." <laughs> <laughs> no way. You were a term. Yeah. You were a verb. Yeah, we were we we were a verb in our scene, like in. Myrtle's Inlet, where we looked up. I mean, you could you could probably search Cornbread Myrtle Beach, and like there's like it's there's still like a following out there, and we haven't played in in years. What time you got to go to work? What time you have to get out of here? Six. I okay, could probably cool. get out of here in about half. We've hour probably been or going so. for a minute. How long have we been going to? Uh, one forty-six. Oh, nice. Myrtle yeah, Beach, we'll keep like, going for a little bit. Yeah, but just corn, not best cornbread in Myrtle Beach, no, but just I didn't say best. I <laughs> Matias has got cornbread is. on the brain, dude. Sounds yummy. I'm hungry. Yeah, we're gonna have to eat after this. What pictures? Cornbread band. Carolina Country Music Fest cornbread. That was us. Hit images. See if we can get a promo shot. Oh yeah. That's oh, us. there we go, dude. See, that's all us. Like all of that. Wow. There he is. How you like them legs? Look at them legs out. I've never seen those things before, dude. How do you keep them things covered up? Hell yeah, <laughs> brother. It was a beach band. That's fucking rad. That's the dude. That, that, that painting was sick. The uh, Our symbol over there. It, dude, it, that it, is rad. Our symbol is ovaries and a vagina and a butt plug in between the guitars down below. Down one. If you, if down you one. Yeah. <sighs> See, it's ovaries and a vagina. Mm-hmm. And then the butt plug in between <laughs> the guitars. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a lava lamp. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's cool. It's like one of those psychiatrist things. Like, what do you see when you look? Would you look like at this? Like the black splotches yeah. or whatever. Ink, yeah. ink blot. But yeah, dude, that was us. But yeah, man. if it was we, my uh, if it was my only thing, not B R E D, not those guys. Well, that's us. Uh, uh, we did a. Uh, we did. Um, this episode of a thing that's us on the house of blues stage right there back in uh in north myrtle beach we were acoustic two acoustic guitars in a gym bay but dude, we ran our whole like we ran that area bro yeah for a while but yeah they it, it, we mixed our songs together we would do uh mashups 
Like it would, we'd pick a chord progression and just stick with it, and try to see how many songs we could fit into that. Mm -hmm. And other bands would be like, "Dude, that thing you guys did was incredible! Like, you guys been practicing that?" And we're like, "We've never practiced." <laughs> like, we show up. You and turn we, into Allen Iverson. You talking about practice? You talking about practice? We talking about practice? I thought we, we was talking about the game. We thought we were talking about game. But I don't even practice. We never practiced. And we were a band for 12 years, and we may practice three times. Yeah. Maybe. Just natural-born like, showman. Not even that. We would just – we didn't give a fuck. Yeah. We were all we were all alcoholics. We would show up, and we would just take shots, and we would get on stage and be like, you know this song? Eh, not really. And you had played all right, enough. Well, here, I know this song. So that's yeah. the thing. That was for cornbread. What made us as good as we were was that as long as one of us knew the song, like as long as me or Adam, either guitar player, as long as one of us knew the song, we we could do it. You could you could figure it out. So like if Adam could play it and Smitty could sing it, I'll 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 noodle. I'll yeah. figure it out. We were both proficient. Both guitar players were very proficient with lead. You guys had all played enough on your own time over the years yeah. that, that it didn't matter. And Smitty didn't and even I mean, play that's the kinda drum. How, that's kind of how we are with the band. Like, I, I practice their set uh, in here by myself. They send me, like, a, yeah. a, 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 a version of the set that I just practice to with yeah. all the stuff in between because we run on backing track, have a backing track yeah. with the, the drummer plays to a click and everything. Nice. For the metal, you kind of have to do that. You know right. what I mean? But uh, we practiced one time and then ripped that show. Hell yeah. I got flew home and practiced once. It was like, boom, because we've been playing music together for so long. Oh, yeah. Well, that's a thing where you guys are, like, doing original music. It's a little different, yeah. And stuff like that. So, I mean, we had originals and we would do them every now and again, but... We were a covers band. Mm -hmm. We were a party band. We we wanted to make sure you had a good time. Oh yeah, and that was us. That's where the after, fucking money is. It, it was man, and like we're also the reason that bands in Myrtle Beach don't get free tabs with their because <laughs> you ran up. A few. That was us. That was our fault. <laughs> we. You're, you're like the kid at school that put the gum under the table. We're the. There's like <laughs> no this, no gum allowed. Someone is at fault here, and it was us. Uh. <laughs> But yeah, we we uh, we had a band tab. Somebody commented the other day on a Facebook thing that I shared, and uh, they were like, "Man, I still remember that band tab that you guys posted a while back because it was like a three hundred dollar tab, and we were only getting paid like three hundred dollars for that gig back then." Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and you so you you ran up a th you ran up what you got paid in alcohol. Yeah, Jesus Christ! But that was a regular occurrence. But like it, it was it was. So to the point that we were not allowed to like the band the the restaurants in the area started like stopped allowing bands to drink for free, and that was a thousand percent. They say fault. one person ruins it for everyone. That was us. We yeah. we did it. But don't you feel like if it? But to go back to what we were saying, it's like don't you feel like if it was if it was just the one thing that you were doing was was just music that it wouldn't be enough? Are we just gluttonous in that way? Like it's like. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Sometimes it's like, yeah, do do we just want to challenge ourselves? There's that. But then the other thing, it's like, it's it's like it, it's what it's like. It's not enough, or almost. Like it's I never want, enough. Yeah. Nothing is ever enough, man. Like I I uh, I don't know, man. Like even even in when everything is going right, we started this episode talking about how good life is. Mm -hmm. I still find a way to be sad. Yeah, you know, like it's it's still a thing. That, you know, no matter what, it's never going to be enough. I'll always be able to focus on what's not there rather than what is for some reason. And I don't like I that a lot that's of people true. Are like that, though. I think it's yeah, just how well, we're wired. I, well, that's what I mean to say is like, I, I, I don't want to, I, I can only speak from my own experience. And I, I, I have too much of a, 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 a proclivity of trying to speak f on everyone's behalf because I feel like I'm just like everyone else and everyone else is just like me and I hold everyone to but that you know same that's standard. Not the way it is. Correct. 
So I try to make sure to be like, I, I'm only speaking from my my perspective. So like, if everybody is, I'm I'm sure everybody is just still very doubtful. Even the person who feel who everything is going right for, like that person is probably still like, man, this shit sucks. Or it ain't enough. They have their sights set on something else. Yeah. Everybody wants to make more money or, you know, get bigger, do more show, whatever it is that you do. You want to progress at it. Most people. Yeah. Most, yeah, most people, like, most people who are fine, and I would say that, like, there are multiple different types of people, but I'm going to mark two of them are the people who are okay with, like, going to do a mundane job where you make decent money and you can make a really good life for yourself and do normal things and have a a family and and like a wife and then raise and, children and have and enough just, gratification from that to have that be your thing. That's I'm sure that's totally fine. I wish I was one of those people, people sometimes. I am not I'm not that. Yeah. And like and and I think that a lot of people from back home maybe uh holds a little resentment towards me for leaving. You know, because like, I, feel that I think sometimes. me getting out kind of puts a magnifying glass on, oh, man, I wish I could do that. It's like I've shown the, the children where the matches are, mm. and there's one of your things. Yeah. Uh, like <laughs> the colloquialism. I've, yeah, I've shown the children where the matches are. So now They want to burn down the house. Well, no, now it's just like, wow, yeah, man, I wish... I wish I could. I wish I was that free to where I could just pick up and just leave. Yeah, up uh, a, a place. That... I get that too sometimes from pe- from people back home. But to to circle it back, I guess, and put a, a ribbon yeah, on yeah. it and a, a make it positive right. is that I am so much happier doing. I'm so happy I tried that new thing that you told me to try because Dude, here we are, yes. almost two years from that. And I think we did that podcast in September two or December two years ago. So December will be like a, two years for me. Yeah. And it's been so much fun. I've made so many friends. I've laughed. Ha- laughing's healthy for you. I feel great all yeah. the time. You know what I mean? It just, you can see it on, in my skin. <laughs> you know what I mean? My hair. Oh, yeah. It's like, I'm, I'm, you can tell I'm, it's, I'm happy and healthy. And, and it's like, it's from trying new shit, dude. You got to try new shit if you're feeling stagnant or like you've done so yep. much of one thing but that's your thing because like a lot of people do comedy or music or whatever and they're like no like this is like part of my personality like i have to be the guy that does music you know what i mean yeah, and, and it's like okay but what you could do something else you could do jujitsu you could do com- you could do you know you could do try try something new and start at the bottom again and that journey is fun and you'll be like oh yeah that's why i fell in love with music yeah. so now i'm gonna go push myself with music you know what I mean? Not that we have to like try to fucking teach a lesson or whatever on the pod, like at the end of the pod here. But it's just I, that that to me is what it's all about. And you were a big part in me, like, you know, taking that step to figure that out. Well, I'm glad that you did, man, because I'm sure that it, uh, I'm sure that it helps having some sort of a release that isn't the thing that we. Yeah, and there's a con- level of camaraderie too with the within the community here. That yeah, dude, with 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 mo- almost all of us, you know. Like we're all in the shit together, and it's it's yep. fun, you know. And then when someone Lee like Ari Matty starts fucking blowing gets on Rogan, you're like, oh, fuck. Dude. you know what I mean? And you're like, you see these guys go off. And I remember watching Cam like before he was ever on discovered on Kill Tony or anything at the Lucky Duck one time, like right after I started, and I was like still like scared of you know what I mean, like yeah. doing it. And uh, it was a packed Lucky Duck. Every picnic table was filled. And he was down there on the ground. You know like how it's like, yeah. I try to explain it to people. It's like the people are sitting up here and you're doing comedy down here. Yeah. It, there's like a step up to where you sit down and you do comedy. Yeah. It's like you're doing comedy to people's you knees. You usually step it's, up to the stage, yeah. but you step down to this it's, one. It's like the best way to cut your teeth because you're doing comedy to people's knees. So it's like if there's ever yeah. a, a good arena to figure it out. And But I saw Cam there just fucking destroy. I've like never right, seen him do It was mad. like right when he moved here, I think. And yeah. he was, I was like, who is this guy? And he was killing at, to people's knees. Yeah. Just crushing. And I oh, yeah. had him, and they were all laughing, and you're like, dude, damn. And then to see, like, and then, of course, three months later, he's a regular on Kill Tony, and you're like, yeah. 
for sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, yeah. I was not surprised no, by that at no. all. I remember the night he got to town, I used to do, oh, do the pre-show for uh, the Dark House shows, mm. Francisco Rincon mm-hmm. and Adam. Uh, I used to do that show, and Cam showed up and did a set on that one. And, man, I don't think uh, Francisco had ever heard him go up, and he was like, man, this guy, this guy's so funny, he could be the next Eddie Murphy. <laughs> And like he, I don't think he'd ever heard him go up. And he was like, "Yeah, man, I just said that. I didn't, I didn't know yeah. that he could be the next <laughs> yeah. Eddie Murphy." He was just hosting. He was just bringing the guy up, right? And in a funny way. And man, Cam got up and was like, "Eddie Murphy, I don't, you know." He yeah, just he kind of yeah, went yeah. with it, and then moved on to his set, and it was like. Really masterful to for someone who had been doing it for I think a year and a half at that mm-hmm. point, like almost a like a baby yeah. in comedy, and just like dude, he's got a lot of shit figured out already that comedians usually don't get until, until a decade in, right? And not only that, now he's growing faster because of his surroundings, because. Like, imagine if you had the greatest comedians in the world in your year. Like, what if what if that was your crew? Yeah, no. Like, yeah, the can't. greatest comedians in the world were your crew. That's And nuts. then, like, because you riff with your friends just like they, like, friends riff. Like, imagine if you were riffing with the funniest people on the planet on a regular basis, dude. How much better you would get. Yeah. And Ari Maddie is the man. I remember when Ari got to town, I hung out with him the first night I saw the guy get shot downtown. Mm. And I was weird. I was the weird thing in the room that night. And I got. Because you were having anxiety. And- I got to feel in a, a different way because they were listening to music in the green room and kind of dancing around and stuff. And I'm just kind of sitting there trying to like get calm down. Yeah. And that that touched me in a weird way back then. But then, like, after I saw him go up, and what really made me, uh, what really made me get Ari Maddie was one night we did a staff show to nobody. And I mean, we were, we, there was nobody in the room. But Ari Maddie sat there the whole night. He sat there in the crowd and he watched everybody go up. And it was almost like, you know, I just want to see what everybody is. I want to see who mm-hmm. who's who. I want to see what everybody. He he watched every comedian set, and then he would come up to people and like say, "Hey, this was really funny. Do this. Try this thing." Mm-hmm. And that was just like a, and not in like a, "Hey, I'm, I'm yeah, I not know it all. A, yeah, not in a know it all way. Yeah, but but dude, you can tell these people these people that show up that are just going to be huge and you can tell because of how they they act and the respect that they have for everybody and Ari's got that yeah. Cam has that that's a that's a thing yeah Drew Drew Nickens is a is a sweetheart of yeah. a person dude he's just one of the nicest people on the planet like of course things are going to work out for the guy yeah and it's funny people get big and they forget that they came from they came from nothing too you yeah. know what i mean and like they're cool people they can still be cool people too like people in the reddit going crazy or whatever but yeah people should never people should never uh people should never treat anybody that are in a position that they were once in differently than they would want to have been treated in their lives at that moment i know that i said that weirdly but it was correct <laughs> <laughs> i think it's a good place to wrap it up dude you're the legend yeah, I fucking love you, Yonder. Love you, Thanks for coming, dude. You're always uh, you have an all expense paid pass here to the stew. So Hell thank yeah, you for brother. thank you for coming through, man. I appreciate it. Uh, you want to plug your stuff here in this one? Yes, at Yonder Wizard, Z Z E R D everywhere. YouTube, Yonder Wizard, uh, fully monetized. You can become a member there. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Everything, all of my links are at Linktree slash Yonder Wizard Z Z E R D. There's links in there to everything: the Patreon, the YouTube, the Twitch, 
the all the shit. Follow it's him on everything, there. guys. Support this man. You can see him every Thursday at the Sunset, Sunset Strip, Strip playing music, and then you do comedy on fr- uh, Fridays. Yeah, I do comedy pretty much every Tuesday at Sunset Strip uh, at eight o'clock Tuesdays. That's our show, but I'm I'm there Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday. I'm working the front door, so come hang out on the street if you want to see what it's like down here in Austin. Yeah, buddy. And you can come see me do a little bit of time up top and uh, host for the the great Mike, great and powerful Michael Ridley uh, yeah. on August 31st in Fort Worth, Texas. We're gonna be doing some more shows, you guys. If you if you want to see Michael and want to want if you're a metalhead and you follow me with the band, you want to see me do stand up. The only place that you can really do that is at a show because I'm not like trying to post clips right now. We're still in the in the in the learning process. You know what I mean? And so uh, so uh, come out to a show, you guys. We're gonna be doing more shows with Ridley around, and I'll be uh, on the road ski with him. So. Uh, uh, make sure to like and subscribe and uh, and see you in the next one.